Okay, let's jump in. Here's something that might make you uh, do a double take. Oh, yeah. So, 1945, right? A guy's got a candy bar in his pocket. Uh huh. And it melts. Not because it's hot outside, but because he's standing near some radar equipment. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Just melts. Yeah, it just melts. Seems small, maybe a bit sticky, you know? Right, a minor annoyance. But that exact moment, that melted candy bar, it sparked this question, this idea. An idea that turned into... A microwave oven, now in, like, hundreds of millions of homes. That's incredible how that one sort of accidental thing... Exactly. This everyday occurrence becomes the seed for something so huge. It really shows how paying attention to, well, the weird stuff around us can pay off. Totally. And that's exactly what we're digging into today. This whole deep dive is about that story. This story behind the candy bar. Yep. And the uh, really remarkable guy, Percy Spencer, a self-taught innovator who saw something in that mess. Okay. Our main source here is a really good article detailing his life, you know, and how this invention came about sort of unexpectedly. Right. So the mission for you listening is really to uncover this, well, pretty extraordinary journey. Yeah. This guy, Percy Spencer, through sheer curiosity, really, and just sticking with it. Mm Mm-hmm. He overcame some major challenges early on to create something we all kind of take for granted now. We really do. It's just such a powerful example of how individual drive and maybe seeing things a bit differently leads to big things. And that journey, it really kicks off way back. His early years in rural Maine. Tough start, right? Very tough. Father died when he was just a kid. His mother wasn't around. Raised by relatives. Life was about necessity not comfort. And you often see that, don't you? How really significant hardship early on shapes someone. For sure. What's really striking about Spencer is the the resilience, the resourcefulness that seems to have come out of that. Yeah. It kind of suggests that challenges aren't always walls. Sometimes they're, well, the article hints at this. Sometimes they're doors. That's a great way to put it. And think about this, his formal schooling. It started when he was 12. 12 years old. Left school, went to work in a mill, to help support the family, you can imagine the limits that usually imposes. Oh, absolutely. Which makes what happened next even more, well, inspiring. Right. So a local paper mill nearby decides to get wired for electricity. Which was a huge deal back then. Totally new. Probably mind-blowing for the community. Yeah. And Percy, he was mm. just hooked, completely fascinated. It wasn't just a job site to him? No, it lit a fire. This lifelong passion for understanding how things, you know, work. And this is the really cool part. Yeah. No formal training, no teachers for this stuff, just pure curiosity driving him. Mm-hmm. He basically taught himself electricity from scratch. And then helped wire that same mill. Really shows that uh, that courage the article talks about, stepping into the unknown. Totally relying on himself. Yeah, it highlights that you know necessity isn't just the mother of invention. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's the best teacher, too. That kind of self-directed learning, it says so much about his motivation, doesn't it? It really does. He wasn't following some syllabus. He was just genuinely interested, wanting to get to the bottom of how things function. Yeah, that deep personal drive. Exactly. True expertise often comes from that, that innate need to understand. And that expertise he built himself, it really pushed him forward. At 18, he joins the U.S. Navy. Inspired by wireless communication, which was still pretty cutting edge then. Right. And think about those long nights on watch duty. Could have just been dead time. But no, not for him. He turned those hours into, well, his own personal university. Didn't he just devour textbooks? Yeah, stuff like radio technology, trigonometry, chemistry, physics, subjects he'd had zero formal teaching in. It's just incredible. It really shows that, you know, your background doesn't have to define your ambition. Self-initiative can break down huge barriers. And that drive just kept going. Yeah. After World War I, he lands at the American Appliance Company. Which became Raytheon later on. Right. And he didn't just blend in, did he? No. The article makes it clear he stood out immediately. He had this real knack for solving problems. An innovator. Yeah, a way of thinking that saw solutions others missed. A natural tinkerer, finding possibilities where others saw roadblocks. And that knack became absolutely critical during World War II. Ah, the magnetrons? Yes. The British desperately needed them for radar, but production was painfully slow. Like, what was it, 17 a week? Something like that just crippling for the war effort. And this is where Spencer's genius just exploded, really. Magnetrons, these tubes generating microwave energy for radar. And as it turns out, for cooking. Exactly. 
But back then, the focus was radar. Instead of just tweaking the old process... He threw it out. Pretty much. He completely reimagined it. Switched from complex copper bars to simpler stacked metal sheets, laminas, uh -huh. and replaced fiddly soldered wires with solid rings. It was a fundamental shift. Revolutionary, really. His genius wasn't just knowing the tech, it was rethinking the process. That's true innovation. And the result. Just staggering. Production went from 17 a week. To 2,600 a day. 2,600, just imagine the impact that had. Huge. Definitely played a massive role in Allied wins, especially at sea. It makes you think, you know, how sheer ingenuity can literally save lives. Absolutely. And for that, he got the Navy's highest civilian honor. Shows how vital his engineering was. Okay, so he's got this deep, self-taught knowledge, this proven track record at Raytheon. Which sets the stage perfectly for 1945. And the candy bar moment. <laughs> Back to the beginning. Working with that radar equipment. I Raytheon, yeah. And the microwaves did their thing on a snack. And like we said, most people might just shrug it off, right? Yeah, maybe complain about the mess. But Percy, his curiosity just lit up. He asked that key question. If these waves melt candy. Could they cook food? That simple, almost childlike question. It's so often the starting point, isn't it? It really is. And he didn't just wonder. He jumped right in. Started experimenting. Popcorn first, apparently. Yeah. A literal success. Popping all over the place, I bet. Huh. Then the egg experiment. <laughs> Slightly more uh, dramatic. The exploding egg. Probably messy. A vivid lesson in the power he was dealing with and the need to control it. But those first messy tests, they're crucial. They pave the way. So from those tests, he builds this basic metal box. A container. Right. Directs the microwaves inside and bam. The first microwave cooking happens. The article calls it a revolution in cooking, and it really was. Totally new way to prepare food. A complete paradigm shift. No flames, no heating elements in the traditional sense, just invisible waves cooking from the inside out. Must have seemed like science fiction. Definitely. But getting from that box to the oven in your kitchen, that took time. Yeah, it wasn't smooth sailing. Raytheon brought out the first one, the Raider Range. Which was enormous, right? Yeah. And super expensive. Huge. And people were, well, skeptical. Even skeptical. Yeah, about radiation safety. Understandable, really. New tech, invisible waves. It sounds a bit unnerving if you don't understand it. It highlights that classic challenge for anything groundbreaking, doesn't it? Overcoming fear and misunderstanding. And it wasn't just radiation worries. It was the size, the cost, even questions about whether the food would taste okay or be safe. But Spencer's idea, and let's face it, the sheer convenience, it won out eventually. Massively. Today, the article says over 200 million microwave ovens are out there globally. Just stop and think about that number. 200 million from a melted candy bar. Mind-boggling. And the impact goes way beyond just reheating coffee, right? Oh, yeah. Food packaging, science labs, even medicine uses microwave tech now. It really democratized convenience in the kitchen. Quick, easy food prep for millions. And Percy Spencer, the self-taught kid from Maine. He had an amazing career at Raytheon. Rose right up. Senior VP, board member. And get this, 150 patents to his name. Wow, 150. Yet, how many people actually know his name today? The article really hits on that. That's such a good point. How do we remember the people behind the tech that shapes our lives? We use the invention every day but the inventor. Often forgotten. There's a disconnect there. The article mentions the early controversy, the fears, mm -hmm. but broadens it out. To this bigger question of recognition. Yeah. Who do we celebrate? Whose contributions do we maybe just overlook? It makes you question things. It's definitely worth thinking about. The microwave is a household name, but Percy Spencer isn't for most people. But ultimately, the article frames his life as this powerful lesson, right? Absolutely. The lesson is about relentless curiosity. He took that tough start and turned it into this drive to figure things out. Saw possibilities everywhere. Turning adversity into opportunity. That's the core of it. And the curiosity just kept pushing him, even without formal training. He had a great quote. Oh, yeah, about teaching himself. I just got hold of a lot of textbooks and taught myself while I was standing watch at night. Perfect. <laughs> Sums up his whole approach. Just self-driven learning. So... Maybe something for you listening to think about. What doors could you open if you looked at challenges a bit differently, like Spencer did? It's a powerful thought. His life really hammers home that idea that, you know, limitations are often what we make them. Real curiosity, plus just sticking with it, that can lead to amazing things. So we started with that fun fact. 
the melted candy bar. Kicking off a global change. And we've walked through this incredible journey of Percy Spencer, the guy who made it happen. So maybe next time you use your microwave or even just look around at everyday stuff. Yeah. Think about the hidden stories, the people whose curiosity brought those things into being, what accidental discoveries might be lurking, waiting for your own curiosity. Great final thought. Consider the power of just asking why. <laughs> you know, seeing the world fresh, just like Percy Spencer did with that melted candy bar. 